Hi, welcome back to my class in Mathematics in the Modern World. For today, we continue with transportation problem. But today, we will take the first case of unbalanced transportation problem. We are done with balanced transportation problem, which occurs when the total demand is equal to the total supply. The unbalanced transportation problem occurs when the total demand is not equal to the total supply. And this can happen in two cases. The total demand is not equal to the total supply when first the total demand is greater than the total supply. And secondly, the total demand is not equal to the total supply if the total demand is less than the total supply or the total supply is more than the total demand. In both cases, we will use a dummy variable, either a dummy demand or a dummy supply. If the total demand is greater than or more than the total supply, we will use a dummy supply. If the total demand is less than the total supply or the total supply is greater than or more than the total demand, we will use a dummy demand. The dummy demand or the dummy supply is a fictitious demand or fictitious supply which means that dummy supply and dummy demand are just computational device and we will make use of them to balance the unbalanced transportation problem. The dummy demand and the dummy supply do not really exist in reality but uh, we will use them to make the unbalanced transportation problem a balanced transportation problem. For today, we will start with the first case of unbalanced transportation problem where the total demand is more than or greater than the total supply. Consider the following transportation problem. In this transportation problem, the demands come from customers X, Y, Z with demands of 215 units, 183 units, 224 units respectively. And the supplies will come from suppliers A, B, C with 148 units, 129 units and 207 units respectively and of course the cell costs are given these are the costs of transporting one unit from supplier to customer as in balanced transportation problem before you proceed with the solution of transportation problem by using the stepping stone method, you check if the given transportation problem is balanced or unbalanced by getting the total demand and the total of the supplies. We get the total demand by adding the demands of customer sex YC. Total demand is the sum of the demands of the three customers XYZ. 215 plus 183 plus 224. And you can add this mentally if you are good in mental addition but you can always use calculator 
to get the sum 215 plus 183 plus 224 and the total demand is 622 units we also get the sum of the supplies to get the total supply denoted by TS The total supply is the sum of the available units in supplier A, 148, plus the available units in supplier B, 129, plus the available units in supplier C, 207. We add this to get the total supply, TS. We add 148 plus 129 plus 207 and the total available supplies is 484 units. And since the total demand Since the total demand of 622 is not equal to the total supply of 484 units, we conclude that the given transportation problem is a unbalanced transportation problem. Unbalanced because the total demand is not equal to the total supply. In particular, the total demand is greater than the total supply and that is the first case where you will have unbalanced transportation problem now to balance this unbalanced transportation problem we will make use of dummy supply. The dummy supply is used when the total demand is more than or greater than the total supply. And the total and the dummy supply is a fictitious supply. That means that it does not really exist, but it's only a computational device and we will use it to balance this unbalanced transportation problem. And the dummy supply, if the total demand is greater than the total supply, is equal to the total demand minus the total supply. Again, for the first case of unbalanced transportation problem where the total demand is greater than the total supply, we make use of dummy supply to balance the unbalanced transportation problem. And the dummy supply is equal to the total demand minus the total supply. Total demand is 622 units minus the total supply of 484 units so we get the difference 622 minus 484 138 units We will create a supply of 138 units 
but this uh, supply of 138 units is only imaginary. It's a fictitious supply. It does not really exist. And we will add this to these uh, available supplies from the three suppliers so that the total, demand, the total supply 148 plus 129 plus 207 plus the dummy supply will be equal to the total demand of 622. So now we know that we will use a dummy supply of 138 units to balance this transportation problem. The next step is to construct the modified transportation table from the given transportation table. In the modified transportation table, you will add a last row, you will add a fourth row, you will add a supplier, a dummy supplier. Initially, originally we have three suppliers, A, B, C. After, sorry, the suppliers are A, B, C. Originally, we have three suppliers, A, B, C. But now we create a dummy supplier. In the modified transportation table, after the third supplier, you add a fourth row for the dummy supplier. And the dummy supplier will have a dummy supply of 138 units. Everything else is the same as in the original given transportation problem but unbalanced. You have the demands coming from the three customers X, Y, Z. You have the same number of units available from the three suppliers. And you have the same sell costs. Except that in the modified transportation table, you add a, another row for the dummy supply and dummy supplier that has a dummy supply of 138 units. Now, you can check that this is now a balanced transportation problem. If you will add the demand 215 plus 183 plus 224, the total demand is 622 units. Now, you add the supplies from supplier A, 148, plus from supplier B, 129, plus from supplier C, 207, plus the dummy supply of 138 units, and you should get a total of 622 units. So this is now a balanced transportation problem with total demand of 622 units and also total supply, the sum of the last column of 622 units. Now for the, the last row, the cell costs are always zero because this uh, supply is fictitious, imaginary, it does not really exist. So we will not incur any cost from these dummy supplies. For the dummy supplier, for the last row, for the dummy supply, the sub costs are always zero. Again, for if the, the total demand is greater than the total supply, you will use a dummy supply, which is equal to total demand minus total supply. And you will construct a modified transportation table by adding a last row, by adding a row after the last supplier for the dummy supplier that has a dummy supply equal to total demand minus total supply. And the cell cost for the dummy supply or dummy supplier are all zero. 
because this uh, dummy supply, as I said, is imaginary, fictitious, it does not really exist. Hence, it will not contribute to transportation costs. And uh, after you have constructed the modified transportation table, you can now proceed with the stepping stone method as what we have done in the solution of a ballast transportation problem. And we always start by satisfying the demand of the first customer X. And uh, the supply will always come from the first supplier A. The demand of customer X, the first customer X is 215 units. And supplier A has only 148 units. That means we cannot take all of 215 from supplier A. So what we do, we give all the available supplies of supplier A, 148 units, to customer X, the first customer. And we write in this vacant cell, 148 units. So we have already given 148 units to the first customer X, but X requires 215 units. So X needs an additional of 215 minus 148 units. And use your calculator to get the difference. Two hundred fifteen minus one hundred forty-eight, and you should get sixty-seven units. And uh, additional sixty-seven units to be given to customer X will come from the second supplier. Supplier A has no more supplies because we have given all the available supplies of supplier A to customer X. Thus, the additional 67 units for customer X will come from supplier B, the second supplier B. So, we write in this vacant cell 67 units. Sixty-seven was obtained by subtracting 148 from 215. Or 215, the demand of X minus the supplies it received of 148. 215 minus 148 is 67. So we have given 67 to X and 148. To X, 67 will come from supplier B, 148 will come from supplier A. Now, the total 148 plus 67 is 215. That means we have satisfied all the demands of the first customer X. Now, how many units are left in supplier B after we give 67 units to customer X? 129 minus 67 is the remaining number of units in supplier B. 129 minus 67. And you should get 62. The remaining supplies in supplier B will now be given to the second customer Y. 62 units. Again, 62 units is obtained by subtracting 67 from 129. 129 minus 67 is 62 units. That is given to customer Y from supplier B. But customer Y requires 183 units. And we have given only 62 units. So how many more units? Thus, uh, we should supply to customer Y 183 minus 62. We 
have 183 minus 62 is 121 units. And the 121 units will come from supplier C because no more supplies are available in supplier B after we have given 67 units to X and 62 units to Y. 67 plus 62 is 129. So we have supplied, we have used all the available supplies of the second customer P. So the additional 121 units to be given to customer Y will come from the third supplier C, 121 units. Now we check if all the demands of customer Y have been satisfied. 62 plus 121 is 183 units. Now, how many units are left in supplier C? 207 minus 121. 207 minus 121 equals 86 units. 86 units are left in supplier C after giving 121 units to customer Y. And the remaining 86 units in supplier C, we will give to the third customer C. 86 units. But C, the last customer C, requires 224 units. 224 minus the 86 units we have given to C from supplier C. 224 minus 86 equals 138. So, customer C requires an additional of 138 units. And we will get that 138 from the dummy supplier that has exactly 138 units. But 138 units is only a dummy supply. Based from this modified, this is now your initial transportation table. The modified transportation table is your initial transportation table. And based from this initial transportation table, the third customer C will only receive 86 units. And the 138 units demand of C will not be satisfied. Although we will get, we will supply 138 to customer C, but 138 is just an imaginary or dummy supply. Now we check if we have correctly distributed the supplies to the customers by adding the numbers vertically. The sum of the numbers vertically should be equal to the demand of the customer. 0 plus 0 plus 67 plus 148 is 215 units. We add vertically 0 plus 121 plus 62 plus 0 is 183 units. 138 plus 86 plus 0 plus 0 equals 224 units. We also Add the numbers horizontally and the sum of the numbers horizontally should be equal to the supplies of the supplier. We begin with supplier A, 148 plus 0 plus 0 equals 148. For supplier B, 67 plus 62 plus 0 equals 129 units. And for supplier C, 0 plus 121 plus 86 equals 207 units. And for the dummy supplier, we have 0 plus 0 plus 138 equals 138 of dummy supply. 
and from this modified transportation table which now becomes your initial transportation table we will develop the initial distribution plan from which we will compute the first or the initial transportation cost all right the initial distribution plan corresponding to the initial transportation table which is actually our modified transportation table in the first column we write the supplier followed by the demand or the customer the number of units to be supplied to the customer from the supplier the transportation cost per unit of transporting some units from to the customer from the supplier and the total cost of transportation from supplier to customer. We start with supplier A to customer X. We supply 148 units at 12 pesos per unit. For the first customer, uh, for the first customer X, we supply 148 units from supplier A at uh, the cost of uh, transportation cost of 12 pesos per unit. So the total cost of supplying 148 units from supplier A to customer X is 148 multiplied by 12. 148 multiplied by 12 is 1776 next from supplier B to customer X we supply 67 units uh, transportation cost of 9 pesos per unit And we calculate the total cost of supplying 67 units from supplier B to customer X at 9 pesos per unit by multiplying 67 by 9. 67 multiplied by 9. And we get 603 pesos. From the same supplier B, we supply 62 units to second customer Y at 18 pesos per unit. And we compute the total cost of transporting 62 units from supplier B to customer Y at transportation cost of 18 pesos per unit by multiplying 62 by 18. Multiply 62 by 18. And you should get 1,116. We are now in the third supplier C. From C to customer Y, we supply 121 units at uh, 21 pesos per unit. And we multiply 121 by 21 pesos per unit to get the total cost of transporting 121 units from supplier C to customer Y at transportation cost of 21 pesos per unit multiply 121 by 21 and you should get 2,541 
from the same supplier C. We supply 86 units to the third customer C at 14 pesos per unit. And we multiply 86 by 14 to get the total cost of transporting 86 units from supplier C to customer Z at transportation cost of 14 pesos per unit. Multiply 86 by 14. And you should get 1,204 pesos. Now, in the distribution plan, we will not include, we do not include the dummy supplier and this dummy supply because this dummy supply will not contribute to the total transportation cost because if you multiply 138 by 0, the product is 0 and it has no effect on the transportation cost. Again, in the distribution plan, we do not include the dummy supplier and the dummy supply because the dummy supply with cell cost of zero will not contribute to the transportation cost. Now we add the last column to get the initial transportation cost. Add the last column. We have Plus 2,541 plus 1,204 and you should get 7,240 This is the initial transportation cost corresponding to this initial transportation table which is actually our modified transportation table and this is the transportation cost that we will try to minimize in the succeeding steps we will find out if we can decrease this total transportation cost or lower this transportation cost so we do that by doing the test for improvement. In the distribution plan, we do not include the dummy supply and the dummy supplier. But in the test for improvement, the vacant cells in the last row, this vacant cell for dummy supplier and customer X is included in the test for improvement. Also, this vacant cell in the last row for dummy supplier and dummy supply, this vacant cell is included in the test for improvement. So we have how many vacant cells to be included in the test for improvement? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We have 6 vacant cells. And in the test for improvement, you may start 
with any of the bacon cells just make sure that you do not miss one or any one of the bacon cells I will start from this bacon cell we will call this bacon cell DS Y And for this vacant cell, we trace a closed path using alternating horizontal and vertical movements beginning with horizontal movement. And we cannot move horizontally to the left because this is vacant. So from this vacant cell, we move horizontally to the right. And the cause associated with this horizontal movement to the right is the positive of this cell cost. Or we write zero. After this horizontal movement to the right, we move vertically and we cannot move up to this cell or up to this cell because these cells are vacant cells. So from 138, we move vertically upward up to 86. And the cost associated with this vertical movement upward is the negative of this cell cost. And we write minus zero. After this vertical movement upward, we move horizontally. We cannot move horizontally to the right. This, these are the supplies, available supplies of supplier C. Hence, from 186, we move horizontally to the left. And we will not move horizontally to the left up to this cell because it is vacant. From 86, we move horizontally to the left up to 121. And the cost associated with this horizontal movement to the left is the positive of this cell cost. We write plus 14. After this horizontal movement to the left, the next move is vertical. You can move vertically upward up to 62 because this is occupied the next move is horizontal you cannot move to the right it's vacant if you move to the left the next move is vertical downward you have vacant cells you can move upward but the next move is horizontal vacant vacant so if you move from 121 vertically upward, you will not be able to go back to this vacant cell, DS, Y. Thus, from 121, we move vertically downward so that we will be back. We are back at the cell where we started. From 121, we move vertically downward back to this vacant cell we are considering. And the cost associated with this vertical movement downward is the negative of this cell cost minus 21. Again, the close path for this vacant cell is horizontal to the right, vertical upward to 86, horizontal to the left up to 121, and vertical downward back at this vacant cell and we find the net cell cost for this vacant cell we have 0 minus 0 is 0 14 minus 21 is negative 7 this negative net cell cost of negative 7 means that if we transfer some units to this vacant cell, the total transportation cost of 7,240 will decrease by 7 pesos per unit, per unit that we transfer to this vacant cell. But we will not transfer yet units to this vacant cell because we have to consider the other vacant cells. And one of them may give a greater 
decrease in the total transportation cost. We next consider this vacant cell. We call this vacant cell Vs x. For this vacant cell, we trace St. Lowe's path beginning with horizontal movement. And we move horizontally to the right because we cannot move to this cell. We move horizontally to the right up to 138. We skip this cell because it is vacant. From this vacant cell, we go straight to 138 and the cost associated with that horizontal movement to the right is the positive of the cell cost or we simply write zero. After this horizontal movement to the right, to 138, the next move is vertical. And we cannot move up to, we cannot move vertically upward up to here or here because these cells are vacant. Thus, from 138, we move vertically upward up to 86 and the cost associated with that vertical movement upward from 138 to 86 is the negative of this cell cost. Minus zero. After this vertical movement upward, the next move is horizontal. And we do not move horizontally to the right because 207 is the number of supplies of supplier C. Hence, from, one, from 86, we move horizontally to the left. But not up to this cell because it is empty. From 86, we move horizontally to the left, up to 121 only. And the cost for this horizontal movement to the left is the positive of this sub cost. We write plus 14. After this uh, horizontal movement to the left, the next move is vertical. And we cannot move downward because it is vacant or empty. Hence, from 121, we move vertically upward to 62. Not up to this cell because it is vacant. From 121, we move vertically upward to 62. And the cost associated with this vertical movement upward from 121 to 62 is the negative of this cell cost, minus 21. After this vertical movement upward from 121 to 62, the next move is horizontal. And we will not move horizontally to the right because this is vacant. From 62, we move horizontally to the left to 67. The cost associated with this horizontal movement to the left from 62 to 67 is the positive of this cell cost. And we write plus 18. And from 67, we the next move is vertical. If you move upward, you can do that because this is occupied. But the next move is horizontal. And these cells are vacant. So you cannot move horizontally to the right. Either to this cell or to this cell. Thus, from 67, our move is vertically downward, straight to this vacant cell where we started. And we skip this vacant cell because it is empty. From 67, we move vertically downward, straight to this cell where we started. And the cost associated with this vertical movement downward is the negative of this cell cost, minus 9. Again, the closed path for this vacant cell, which we call DSX, is horizontal to the right from here straight to 138, vertical upward to 86, horizontal to the left to 121, vertical upward to 62, 
horizontal to the left to 67 and from and from 67 we move vertically downward straight to this vacant cell DSX. We now find the net cell cost for this vacant cell DSX. We have 0 minus 0 is 0. 14 minus 21 is negative 7. Negative 7 plus 18 is 11. And 11 minus 9 is 2. And this positive net cell cost of 2 means that if we transfer some units to this vacant cell DSX, there will be an increase in the total transportation cost of 7,240 of uh, 2 pesos per unit that we transfer to this vacant cell. Hence, we will not transfer any unit to this any number of units to this vacant cell because our total transportation cost, our initial transportation cost will increase by 2 pesos per unit. Now we consider this vacant cell CX. We trace a close path for this vacant cell. The first move is horizontal. We do not move horizontally to the left because this is the supplier C. We move horizontally to the right. If you move from this vacant cell straight to 86, you can do that because this is occupied. The next move is vertical. You cannot move vertically upward because these are vacant cells. But if you move vertically downward from 86 to 138, you can do that because this cell is occupied but from 138 the next move is horizontal and you cannot move horizontally to the left because the cells to the left of 138 are vacant hence from this vacant cell CX we move horizontally to the right up to 121 and the cost associated for this horizontal movement to the right from this vacant cell to 121 is the positive of this cell cost, 19. After the first horizontal movement to the right, the next move is vertical, not downward because this is vacant. Hence, from 121, we move vertically upward to 62. And for this movement upward, the associated cost is the negative of this stock cost, and we write minus 21. After this vertical movement upward, the next move is horizontal, and not to the right because this is empty. From 62, we move horizontally to the left, to 67. The cost associated with this horizontal movement to the left is the positive of this cell cost plus 18. After this horizontal movement to the left, the next move is vertical. From 67, we move vertically upward or downward. If you move upward, you can do that but the next move is horizontal and the cells to the right of 148 are vacant. From 67, we move horizontal, uh, sorry, vertically downward back to where we started, the vacant cell CX. 67 down to this vacant cell and the cost associated with this vertical movement downward is the negative of this cell cost minus 9. Again, we write, we trace the close path for this vacant cell CX, horizontal to the right to 121, vertical upward to 62, horizontal to the left to 67, and vertical downward back to the vacant cell CX. And the net cell cost for this vacant cell is 19 minus 
21 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 18 is 16. And 16 minus 9 is 7. And um, interpretation of this positive net cell cost of 7 is that if you transfer some units to this vacant cell CX, the initial transportation cost of 7,240 will increase by 7 pesos for each unit that you will transfer to this vacant cell. Hence, we will not transfer some units to the vacant cells DSX and CX because they will result to an increase in transportation cost. The next vacant cell is this vacant cell AY. Trace a close path for this vacant cell AY. The first move is horizontal, but not to the right because this is vacant. From this vacant cell, we move horizontally to the left, up to 148. And for that horizontal movement to the left, it will cost you 10 pesos per unit. The cost associated with the horizontal movement to the left from this vacant cell to 148 is the positive of this cell cost. We write 10. After the first horizontal movement to the left from here to 148, the next move is vertical. And we cannot move to this cell or to this cell because they are vacant. Thus, from 148, we move vertically downward up to 67 only. And the cost associated with this vertical movement downward to 67 from 148 is negative of this cell cost. And we write minus 12. After the vertical movement downward from 148 to 67, the next move is horizontal. And we cannot move horizontally to the left because this is the supplier B. Thus, from 67, we move horizontally to the right, not up to this cell because it is vacant. But we move horizontally to the right from 67 to 62. And the cost associated for that horizontal movement to the right is the positive of this cell cost, plus 9. And the next move after this horizontal movement to the right is a vertical movement. If you move up to 121, the next move is horizontal. You cannot move to the left because it is empty. If you move to the right, you can do that. But the next move is vertical and this is empty and this is empty. If you move downward from 86, you can do that. But the next move is horizontal and you have vacant cells to the left of 138. Thus, if you move vertically downward from, from 62, you move vertically downward you will not be able to go back to this vacant cell where we started, the vacant cell AY. Thus, from 62, we move vertically upward. So, we are back at the vacant cell where we started, AY. And the cost associated with this vertical movement upward is the negative of this sub cost, minus 18. Again, the close path for this vacant cell AY, horizontal to the left to 148, vertical downward to 67, horizontal to the right to 62, and vertical upward back to the vacant cell where we started. We compute the net cell cost for this vacant cell. We have 10 minus 12 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 9 is 7, and 7 minus 18 is negative 9.
Let us check. 10 minus 12 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. 7, 7 minus 18. So it's not negative 9. It's negative 11. Now, the negative net cell cost of negative 11 means that if we transfer some units to this vacant cell, AY, the initial transportation cost of 7,240 7, will decrease by 11 pesos for each unit that we will transfer to this vacant cell, AY. So, instead of then transferring some units to this vacant cell DSY, which will also give a decrease in the total transportation cost. We transfer, it's better to transfer some units to this vacant cell AY because you will get a greater, a bigger decrease in the transportation cost per unit. But we will not do that yet because we still have two vacant cells to consider. And we consider this vacant cell A, C. We trace a close path for the vacant cell A, C. The first move is always horizontal. And we, we do not move horizontally to the right because these are the available units in supplier A. From this vacant cell, we move horizontally to the left is straight to 148. We skip this vacant cell. We skip this cell because it is empty. From this cell, we go straight to 148. And for that horizontal movement to the left, the cost associated is positive 13. After the first horizontal movement to the left, the next move is vertical. And we do not move upward. This is the demand of the first customer. But from 148, we move vertically downward, but not up to this cell or to this cell because these cells are vacant. Hence, from 148, we move vertically downward up to 67. And for this uh, vertical movement downward, the cost is the negative of this cell cost, minus 12. After this vertical movement downward to 67, the next move is horizontal. And the, if you move horizontally to the right up to this cell, you cannot do that because this is empty. Hence, from 67, we move horizontally to the right up to 62. And the cost associated for this horizontal movement to the right is the positive of this cell cost, or we write plus 9. After this horizontal movement to the right, the next move is vertical. Not upward because this is vacant. Not downward up to this cell because this is vacant. Hence, from 62, we move vertically downward up to 121 only. And for this vertical movement downward from 62 to 121, the associated cost is the negative of this cell cost, negative 18. And we are now in 121. After this vertical movement downward, the next move is horizontal, not to the left because this is empty, but to the right up to 86. And for this movement, the associated cost is the positive of this cell cost, 21. We write plus 21. We are now at this cell. The next move is vertical. If you move downward, you can do that. But the next move is horizontal. 
and the cells to the left of 138 are both vacant cells. Hence, from 86, we move vertically upward straight to this vacant cell AC where we started. We skip this uh, cell because it is vacant. From 86, we go straight to AC where we started. And the cost associated with the vertical movement upward from 86 to this vacant cell is the negative of this cell cost. We write minus, uh, minus 14. Again, the closed path for the vacant cell AZ, horizontal to the left up to 148, downward to 67, horizontal to the right to 62, downward to 121, horizontal to the right to 86, and vertical upward straight to this vacant cell AZ. We now find the net cell cost for this vacant cell we have 13 minus 12 is 1, plus 9 is 10, minus 18 is minus 8, plus 21. Minus 8 plus 21 is 13, and 13 minus 14 is negative 1. The net cell cost of negative 1 means that if you transfer some units to the vacant cell AZ, the transportation cost will, still, will decrease by one peso per unit that we transfer to the vacant cell AZ. And that means that it, it still remains that transferring some units to the vacant cell AY is the best because we will get the greatest decrease in the transportation cost per unit of 11 pesos per unit. But we still have one vacant cell to consider. The last vacant cell is this vacant cell B, C. We trace a close path for the vacant cell B, C. The first move is horizontal. And it's not horizontal to the right because this is the number of available units in supplier B. From this vacant cell, we move horizontally to the left. If you move up to 67, you can do that. The next move is vertical. These are empty. If you move upward, you can do that. But the next move is horizontal, empty, empty. So if you move from this vacant cell horizontally to the left straight to 67, you will not be able to go back to this vacant cell BC. Thus, from this vacant cell, we move horizontally to the left up to 62 only. And the cost associated with that horizontal movement to the left is the positive of this cell cost. We write 15. After this horizontal movement to the left, the next move is vertical, not upward because this cell is vacant. If you move downward up to this cell, it's not possible because this is vacant. Thus, from 62, we move vertically downward up to 121 only. And the cost associated for this vertical movement downward from 62 to 121 is the negative of this set cost, we write minus 18. And after this vertical movement downward, the next move is horizontal, but not to the left, because this is vacant. From 121, we move horizontally to the right, up to 86, and the cost of this horizontal movement from 121 to 86, is the positive of this cell cost, or we write plus 21.
And from 86, the next move is vertical. If you move downward, you can do that. But the next move is horizontal. You have vacant cells. So you are trapped and you will not be able to go back to this vacant cell. Easy. Thus, from 86, you move vertically upward back to this vacant cell BC. And the cost associated with that vertical movement upward from 86 back to this vacant cell is the negative of this cell cost we write minus 14. Again, the close path for this vacant cell is horizontal to the left, vertical downward, horizontal to the right, and vertical upward, back to where we started. We compute the net cell cost for this vacant cell. We have 15 minus 18 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 21 is 18. And 18 minus 14 is 4. The positive net cell cost of 4 means that the total transportation cost of 7,240 will increase by 4 pesos for each unit that we will transfer to this vacant cell BC. But we will not do that because we do not want an increase in transportation cost. Our objective is to minimize the transportation cost. Hence, from these uh, test results for improvement, we select the most negative among the negative net cell costs. The negative net cell costs are negative 7, negative 11, and negative 1. And among these three, the most negative is negative 11. That means we will transfer some units to the vacant cell AY. We transfer some units to the vacant cell AY. That means we have to to develop the second. This is the initial transportation table. We have to develop the second transportation table in which we will now have some units in the cell AY. Again, I will write the close path for the cell AY. This is the close path for the cell AY. And we now know that we will transfer some units in this cell and that will be written in the second transportation table to determine how many units are to be transferred to this cell. We consider the vertical, vertical directions. Vertically downward, we have 148 to consider. Vertically upward, we have 62 units to consider. Now, the rest of the entries in occupied cells will remain the same if they are not along the path for the, for the cell A1. 121 will remain as is in the second transportation table. 86 will remain as is in the second transportation table. 138 will remain as is in the second transportation table. Because these uh, cells are not in the closed path for this AY, for the cell AY, where we will transfer some units. But all the numbers along the closed path for this cell AY will change. This is now zero in the second transportation table. 
Zero will be, will be replaced by some units. 148 will change, 67 will change, and 62 will change. Now you have to decide whether to... You have to decide between 148 and 62 units to transfer to this cell AY. Question, is it possible to transfer all of 148 to this vacant cell? The answer is yes, because 148 is 148 is less than the demand of Y. But if you add 148 to 121, the sum will be more than one, the demand of Y. You can see that Y has already received 121 units from, from supplier C. Thus, it is not possible to transfer all the 148 units to the cell AY because 148 plus 121 will exceed the demand of 183 of customer Y. So how many units should we transfer to this cell? The answer is 62, 183 minus 121 is 62. And 148 will change, 67 will change, and 62 will become zero in the second transportation table. For your practice, Please complete the solution for this transportation problem. You will continue from this initial transportation table, which is actually the modified transportation table. We now know that we have to transfer some units to this vacant cell AY. And uh, this number, we also know that 62 units must be transferred to this vacant cell and 148 will change, 67 will change and zero, uh, 62 will become zero in the second transportation table but in the second transportation table 121, 86 and 138 will remain the same or as is in the second transportation table because this Numbers are not along the closed path for this cell AY where we would transfer 62 units. Now, after you have developed the second transportation table, you develop the second distribution plan from which you will compute the second transportation cost which is the sum of the entries in the last column of the distribution plan. And after you have computed the second transportation cost, you check if it is correct. And the checking is uh, done by subtracting from the old transportation cost, which is 7,240, the total decrease in the total in yes the total decrease in the transportation cost and the total decrease is equal to the number of units transferred multiplied by the decrease per unit multiplied by the net sell cost of the vacant cell AY which is negative eleven. That's sixty two times negative eleven so to be subtracted from 7,214 and the difference should be equal to the second transportation cost of your second distribution plan. And after you do the checking, you do the test for improvement by considering the vacant cells in the second transportation plan. If, you, if the net cell cost in the test for improvement for the second transportation plan are either positive or zero, then you are done with the solution. The solution is complete and you simply have to rewrite the second distribution plan. But you write instead of second distribution plan, you write optimal distribution plan. 
and the second distribution cost, sorry, the second transportation cost will be rewritten as the minimum transportation cost. But if in the test for improvement, for the second transportation table, you get at least one negative net set cost, then there is still a third distribution table to develop. And you will transfer some units to the vacant cell with the most negative net cell cost. And after you have developed the third distribution table, you develop the third distribution plan, compute the third transportation cost, and do the checking, and test again for improvement. If all the net stock costs are positive or zero, then you are done with the solution. And that completes our lesson for today. In the next lesson, we will take the second case of unbalanced transportation problem where the total supply is more than or greater than the total demand. And in that case, we have to make use of dummy demand to convert the unbalanced transportation problem to balanced transportation problem. If you have questions about the lesson today, you ask your questions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Art Kalison the channel of learning and leisure. Or you may ask your friends, classmates, neighbors, and relatives to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Art Kalisom. Thank you for joining me in my class today in Mathematics in the Modern World.